Hello all, good evening. I am just about ready, I think, to start a Let's Play series on Glen Ellie Farm, a map by Farmer Yip. I've done a ton of work on this particular map, and this now, I think, is my third episode. The first episode was to look at the original map, kind of as Farmer Yip created it. Uh, the second episode was to take a step back to Farming Sim 11, of all things, to see uh, the map called Feldy, which was a masterpiece created by Farmer Yip and a couple others that worked with him back in Farming Simulator 11. And you can check that out in the second video if you want to know more about it. I added it in this series just to show a flavor of the talents of Farmer Yip. And you know, from a brief Google search, I wasn't even able to locate the map, which is kind of a shame. I know it came late in the process for Farming Sim 11, and now it doesn't appear it's been preserved on the internet. I know it was on the FSUK site back when it was up. Um, so maybe someone's aware of where they can download it. Um, I, I don't know, but it, I couldn't find it. This now is Farm Sim 15, and so far as I'm aware, this is the only and the final map ever released by Farmer Yip. And I think I explained in the first video, it was my gateway map into Farming Simulator 15. You know, maybe most people tried Westbridge Hills, Sosnovka when it came out, or rather Bjornholm. Uh, for me, it was Glen Ellie. You know, Farm Sim 15 was kind of already well underway when I discovered the Farming Simulator for franchise, and it was Glen Ellie that kind of drew me in. And somewhere in there, I got the desire to learn how to mod a little bit, so I ended up using Farmer Yip's map to learn uh, what I could about how to make mod maps, if you will. Although I've never made my own mod map, all I've ever done is heavily mod other people's maps and, and tweak them and add to them kind of what I would like. Um, so, but this here, you know, I, uh, I had a list of things that I wanted to do to the map and I never got around to it back in the day. And then Farm 17 came, Farm Sim 19, now we have 22. And last fall, meaning last fall, I guess this would have been September, October of 21, I said, you know, right, we were right on the cusp of 22 coming out, and it's like, I had kind of a, you know what mental overhead is, where something still is sitting in there, maybe if you're like me and have OCD or something. It's like you never tried all these things you wanted to do, why not just go back and do it? I mean. Who cares, right? So that's kind of what I did. And so I went back to Glen Ellie. I had already done a whole bunch of stuff up to it. And there's no way I'm going to get anywhere close to being able to recount everything that I've done. Um, but sometimes the tweaks were minuscule. Um, you know, maybe adding some fence posts here and there. Um, other times they were quite major. You know, adding new functionality to the map and that kind of thing. So maybe this first episode, I'd like to just dive in and take a look at the map and maybe show some of the features or what have you, you know, that, that I worked on. So, I mean, this is kind of, I left most of this alone. I ended up adding a field, so I think the original said it was 19 fields. Um, yeah, and this is one case, by the way, you know, as we see here, so many modders have tried to do this where they, they want to limit kind of how it's distributed and they have their reasons for doing so one simple reason is you know if people know where the download link is they can get the latest version they can get help and assistance in the map you know if anything goes wrong and when someone else uploads it to all these other different places you know they're not able to provide assistance well, in this, but most of the time, it's sort of like it gets ignored, easily ignored. Most of the time, someone will just grab the mods. They will throw them all over the internet, wherever they want, uh, much to the chagrin of, of many modders. 
So, but in this case here, for whatever reason, it um, it wasn't spread all over the internet, and maybe that's because it was very limited in its distribution. You know, he has a link over here where people can watch it on his Twitch channel. I ended up listening to a number of those videos. I think that there is still one video there, kind of somewhere in the middle of the process. It would show him making it. It's four or five hours long. So if you're going to listen to it, prepare to sit there for a while. Where he just, you watch him work on the map and you listen to him talk about what he's doing. I think people had an opportunity to, uh, you know, put something in the chat to ask him questions and so forth. He used to have, you know, tons of videos on there as he worked his way through this and took it all the way to the finish. Unfortunately, a lot of those haven't been preserved. I think there's just one on his Twitch channel, and Farmer Yip isn't even active anymore. So I don't know where someone would find this map. Um, I happen to have the original files, I think, somewhere on my computer, but what uh, we're going to see here is anything but um, the original version. There's a lot of things going on, so I'm kind of hoping that this, that my computer will even be able to run it with some of the improvements that I've put in here. Yeah, it's in right there at 30 some FPS. One of the last things that I installed was Map Viable Objects. Um, you know, this has a couple orchards on it. Uh, it has a bridges in a couple areas. So to add a few other challenges for the player, I put installed uh, viable objects so, so there was additional things for the player to do. Um, so I'm going to hit OK. And oh yes, we got course play installed. I got a number of mods. Let me just slow time down. But the intent is to have a massive challenge for the player. You know, I don't know. Let me put that against the sky. Look at all those dots on this particular uh, PDA map. What you see is whole bunches of rocks. Those are the gray things. And the uh, brown things, if you will, are logs that are in the map. There's little uh, log shaped things. <clears throat> There's a brown dot, which I believe is a rock embedded in the surface of the earth that needs to be dug out. Um, I, I don't know if anybody watching my videos knows I have a fondness for rocks. I don't know why. Um, so I put a whole lot of them into the map. There's a script that it only runs once. You know, at the beginning of the game, it randomly puts down all these rocks in all these places for the player to deal with. And then um, over time, as you clear the fields of these or what have you, you know, then uh, you have clean fields. So it's just extra work for the player to do. But it's been made quite a bit tougher, too. You know, there's you see lots of fields, 13, 14, 19, and so forth. Well, most of these have all been turned into grass fields. They're going to need to be plowed in order to turn into arable fields to work on this map as intended. There's only a handful of arable fields to start with, which I believe is 7, 8, 10, and... Excuse me had a cough that or maybe uh, 7, 8, 10, 3, and 4 are arable. Let me just go see the PDA map. Oops. Oh, yeah, I think we're on the right one. So there's really only, yeah, all of these now are grass, except for the ones mentioned in here that there's virtually nothing, at least nothing I can remember. Uh, looks like a grass patch kind of in the middle. And I may need to clean this up yet even a little bit further as I <clears throat> get into a series on this. The intent was to have an, a couple overgrown fields. Maybe this one here, number seven, is the only one that is anywhere close to being able to be harvested. 
you know, like you see here, three and four are completely withered. Four is the only field that you own as a player. And I may even change that just to give additional challenge um, as I start this up. Um, and, and so no other fields are owned. These two, I think, are plowed. Uh, but there's a lot of work here. You know, and there was another map I played quite a lot with Arms 15. It was called Hard Work and Map version 3, I believe, where you had to do a lot of work. You had to first log the area, then you had to uh, mow it if you wanted the grass, and then dig out the plow to create your fields. So I kind of did the same thing here. You know, if you look out here, we have a forest where it says on the map we should have a field. This is field number six. Now I didn't make the forest as thick as I could, uh, but suffice it to say that there are lots of trees that need to get out of the way before, you know, we can own uh, this forest or, or own the work on this field arable. There's also all these other objects out here that need to be dealt with. You know, we have, there's rocks here to, this one may be a freestanding rock. Let me just see here if I can move it. Yep, I can move that. This one here is going to be a bit of a problem. <clears throat> it's a rock, all right, but it can't be moved. Well, or it can be moved, but you, it's, you're going to have to be a little, you have to do a little bit more work to get it out of here versus just picking it up. This rock here is is kind of a placeable. That's kind of how I did it, if anybody is curious. And they're just kind of placed in here. In order to get this out, the player's going to need to buy and use some dynamite to get it out of the earth. Or they will have to lease the large cat and push on it until the rock comes out of the ground. So I'm actually I'm looking forward to doing a lot of the ad. I've been making so many things on here. And I've tried to test them as I go. So if I do start up a series on this, a lot of it's probably going to be a lot of testing as I go, too. But there are a lot of trees to get out of here, a lot of objects and so forth. And, you know, I'm hitting tab at the moment. And I've started the player with absolutely nothing. So maybe what I need to do at this juncture is GS toggle, get into the console and I'll make it so we can fly kind of get up and take a look at this uh, top down if you will and kind of move around in the map just a little bit so the the PDA map it's really simple in some ways um, maybe I'll go back to it here there is a road that comes up here kind of snakes its way through here is a little bit curvy and then comes around and it goes down over here by the home and turns around. That's the only blacktop in this particular map. The rest, there's a few roads. There's a road headed over here, kind of a road that comes up in here. There's an apple orchard in here. There is, actually on here, there's a pear orchard kind of in this area. There is an, uh, a plum and a cherry orchard up here. And a quarry. Anyway, I, there's so many things. I don't know how in the world I'm going to show all this to everybody. Um, and I may need to create another PDA map to show everything on here. Because there's, there's areas I've created, like up in here, that you can tell there's something maybe there, but you don't see the building. There's a... A factory up here that makes uh, takes wool and cotton. I've installed cotton to this map. You can put it up here and create fabric, and you can sell it in in the town. Right in here is a rock dump um, where you can take rocks and that you can get out of the field, and you can dispose of them here, or you can take rocks down into the quarry. There's a place down here you can crush them into gravel, and there's a place where you can take the gravel and also output sand. You can take it over to a concrete factory. It'll output uh, concrete that you can use to fill a pad. I think it's in here, uh, kind of in a building site, if you will. There's a, a concrete tile that you can take over here. There's kind of a site over here, a utility site. Well, not a utility site. 
there's um, some excavators digging in the ground and they're installing pipe and so you can take it over here and watch it get installed um, up in here there's some oil wells that you can collect uh, the oil and you can sell it in town it's kind of a biofuel place didn't really it originally was something where it would kick out um, something you could use in game I opted not to do that I had so many other things going on um, but there's other factories here too there's a sugar beet cell point here and you can take it to create sugar and then uh, there's a valley kind of over in this area that has a boatload of factories in it one's a flour mill there's a bakery uh, there's a, a place to take, let's see, what goes in there? Is it milk? It's a cleanup. There's, suffice it to say, I can't even remember, there's several factories in here to create goods that can be sold over here. Uh, there's a factory also over in here, probably this area right here, where uh, you, can, you take sorghum. Sorghum's another crop that I installed to the map and you can turn it into molasses I believe and it'll make pallets of it you can sell it in town there's a whiskey distillery over here you can take barley to and and maybe water you drop off the water this was originally in the game but it was just a sell point you know where you could take uh, barley to and dispose of it farmer yip and some of his notes indicated it was originally his desire to uh, to script the whiskey distillery so that um, it would output barrels but it, it's something you never got around to um, so I went ahead and scripted it using the factory script and and have the ad installed in the map as something additional to do there is a uh, potato washer down here somewhere maybe it's right in this area for more uh, things that can be sold uh, there's another cell point I put maybe it's right here I think that's a church so I put another cell point in there just to give a little bit of variety. I installed the damage mod. Um, yeah, boy, yeah, I, there's no way I'm going to be able to remember everything that I did on here. Um, and then there's uh, cosmetic things that I did. Maybe I'll just go through here and see the, uh, the uh, crops that were put in. Um, I guess I installed soybeans, sunflowers, oats, sorghum, etc. Uh, and there might be a couple others that aren't appearing on here. I kind of think I have clee, or which is kind of a clover. I think that can also be put in there. I'm not 100%. Oh, and cotton. I also have cotton you can grow in here. I'm not real sure what terra is. Um, that's kind of interesting. So, so anyway, those are kind of the the crops, if you will. I think last time we're on the original version. I took everybody through the tunnel. There should be a forest over here. Oh yeah, speaking of trees, all of the trees that are on top of well, really almost all of the cuttable, uh, needled trees, if you will. I'm talking deciduous. You can walk up to any deciduous tree, I think, and cut it down if you wish. But for all of these trees that have some type of pine or fir needles on it, or I think some of them are large, like those reddish tinted ones over there, they you can't um, cut them. There's a, let me just go down to earth here for a second. I think maybe I can, I put a script on it, which is going to force the player to buy the forest. It's like a viable forest. So I'm going to come up here and I'm going to try to... I don't think it'll let us... Yeah, see, it's... Uh, it won't let us cut anything down on here. It won't even let us walk through it. I don't know if it... Yeah, it almost appears like it is letting us walk through it. Um, so in order to cut the trees, you first have to buy the forest and... Or maybe it's a lease the forestry. So left alt. So this is going to tell you it's called the sawmill forest that's over here, this particular area. <clears throat> and it's telling you how much 
it's going to cost. You know, so if you want to cut all these trees, you first have to come up with 165,500, and so it'll. Uh, I don't have the money to get it at the moment, um, so I, I it's kind of a moot point. But before it'll let me cut any of these trees, I have to pony up with some money. And and then I mean it's going to continue charging me until I literally get rid of every single tree on on the premises. It, I guess it's just mainly a lease. So once I get rid of all the trees, of course, this will become arable farmland. Um, and of course, I could buy the field under all these trees, but I still have the problem. It's kind of just another script in a map to provide something else to do, you know, for the player. And maybe, uh, maybe what I need to do is head down to the farm. Let's see, is there hot spots here? I don't know if those worked in. Yeah, see, I have no, uh, absolutely no equipment or anything at present. And so I don't know that there's any hot spots that work, so I may just have to hoof it. <clears throat> Oh, look at that. <laughs> i got to line up a cars. And part of it is because we have this boulder stuck in the middle of the road. Uh, oh, a couple boulders in the road. You know, and I use the uh, the field definitions for, for setting these rocks or picking an area for them to drop. So some of them came... You know, the field definitions, as people may know, are set up kind of like rectangles or uh, parallelograms, if you will. And uh, not all of them are going to be nice, neat squares. You know, parallelogram can be very non-square, as in some of these fields. So, But I think the way the script that I wrote grabs some of the coordinates, it tends to work with them on the square. So, oops, I didn't mean to press the F button. So yeah, so the placement of a lot of these rocks is going to be imperfect, imprecise, or whatever. But this is the main uh, farmstead over here. I don't see much going on, uh, but this is where we'll be spending quite a bit at a time. You know, I, I guess I'm reminded as I as I look here on the farm, um, something I added here was, and I always wanted this, was an automatic. I got tired of coming over here loading up manure, so I put a a, uh, a conveyor belt in there to take it out of the pit when it has it when I just drive a trailer underneath. I put something over here that told me with a digital readout just how much was sitting in there. Actually, that one's for slurry straight ahead. This one over here is going to be for the manure in the pit, and obviously right now it's all zeros. There's nothing in there. There's a lot of storage that was in here in this over here to my right it was all identified by signs of course you wouldn't have that in real life uh, this is kind of how farmer he built it he's the one that made those signs I added the digital readouts to it so we could see how much was was in storage and otherwise this barnyard is very similar to what he had and I would periodically add you know a little touch like this it just takes time to add all these details you know, here's a couple cats on a bale of hay and added some sounds. So, is it a big deal? Well, of course not, but I wanted to have a, a kitty cat there. Um, didn't really do much over here, but I did alter. It used to be that all the wool would kind of show up right here on this pad. You can see right straight down there. That's actually for a mission, so I left it in there. But I moved over it over here, and I installed one of these uh, accumulator things for the, the bales of wool that would come out of here to make it a little bit more convenient. I installed a puppy over here to guard the sheep, if you will. Yeah, it looks like a German Shepherd. I don't know why he disappears when you change kind of the orientation looking at him I changed the pen a little bit there used to be some static sheep that were out front 
I just extended the area so that, you know, if we do have sheep, they'll walk all the way out front. There used to be kind of where those trees are just ahead. There used to be some static sheep in there as well. I kind of cleaned that out of there. I figured if there would be no sheep that showed unless you actually bought them. And you know what? I just heard a sheep, so I'm wondering if there are some embedded sounds here, you know, that uh, that that we shouldn't have. So heading kind of over towards, this is the pear orchard, if you will. Yeah, this is just an area to mow. There are some mowing missions on here, and this is how I figure the player will earn some money. You know, I'm literally starting them with nothing. And I maybe need to adjust the cash a little bit if I want to start them out with zero. But something I added uh, towards the end of this as I was working on the map and, and updating it further is, is, like I said, viable objects. You know, because I knew there was these orchards, and these are a universal process kit um, orchard uh, or, or moss, if you will. The buyable objects is so when you come up here, it asks if you want to purchase the pear orchard, and you got to come up with ninety-one thousand five hundred dollars. But the orchard is already planted; it's already there. I just made it inaccessible. You can't drive through here. You can't drive. Um, well, maybe if you're really enterprising, you could figure out a way to get over this fence. Um, although, you know something. I don't know if I add... Oh, look at that. You can drive straight through it. Okay, so I need to fix this in the map. I thought I had done something to it. So, well, <laughs> since I'm the only one that's ever going to play this, it's hardly worth it going in there to put a collision on all these fence posts and fences, if you will. But the idea was once you buy this orchard, buy access to it, you know, if we go back down over here, once you buy access to it, the gate over here is going to open and you can get in and all these fences over here are going to disappear. Not the stone fences, but rather all these other fences that you see. Oh, I'm kind of stuck on the trees. So, yeah, there's we can see all the rock objects. We see the large trees. There is so much work to do here. This is going to be quite a uh, quite a thing we're going to end up doing. Like I say, if if we do it, and I have vacillate wondering how much interest there is in the in an old game to wonder if I should do it even. I ended up adding some trees that are kind of knocked over on the interest just to give the uh, player more to do. <clears throat> There's some access ways to get back into this valley. Some trees that should be cut down here. Now these trees, unlike the other ones, these should be cuttable right at the get-go. I don't think there's any... Well, at least I thought they were cuttable. Hmm. Well, this is indicating to me that maybe I have some more modding work to do to ensure that they are cuttable. It makes me wonder if they are still in... Uh, they might still be identified with a particular forest. You know, we got that script going in here, so... Um, you have to buy the trees before you can cut them, but as I just demonstrated, I couldn't cut those. So... <clears throat> Maybe there's some additional work I need to do. I have a chicken house over here that's going to output eggs. And I have a number of products that need to go into it. you got to give them feed, give them water, give them, uh, <clears throat> give them some cardboard boxes, if you will, so they can uh, put the eggs in. Uh, I kind of modified this mod to suit my own devices. Um, it... I think in the original version of it, you had to buy the chickens and haul them here. I kind of think, you know, I honestly never looked at this, but I almost think the chickens may already be here. So, uh, nada. I wonder if they appear once you start putting food in there. So, I ended up adding things like a pit over here to dump grain into. You know, 
uh, this is where sometimes you wanted a little bit of realism. You know, a lot of times you'll see a grain bin next to a building or whatever, but you don't often see the grain handling equipment. Well, I found an auger to put at the base of this particular bin. We got a, an elevator over here, so presumably grain gets dropped in the pit, goes up the elevator down that pipe, and, and so forth. But probably nobody cares about that. I should probably be taking notes of things I need to fix. I know these trees need to become cuttable because, well, they're, they're going to need to come out of here at some point before the player can access this in here, at least access it easily. we got a flour mill over here. You bring uh, pallets to it, uh, sugar, I believe, and grain. Oh, excuse me, no, you just bring grain and pallets and maybe sacks. Is that it? Boxes? I forget what all comes with. I need to study this again. It'll output flour. Uh, this over here is going to output output something. I don't recall what. There's a bakery over here. Um, so just places and you could bring uh, plums and cherries and apples and so forth back here. Uh, there's something else over here. I uh, wish I could remember everything. I think one of these does bread. And then another does uh, pies. And those can then be sold um, in the town. Have to rise up a little bit. In the map, like I say, I was just experimenting and tinkering. There's a secret little passageway that if someone cuts down all these trees or slithers their way through them, there's a secret hidden little valley down here. And I'll just go there real quick. To go there for a peaceful walk, we use some different foliage in here, have lots of pretty flowers, and it's probably overkill too much for most people, but eh, what can I say? So I put some things in there, kind of like that, for a really colorful place. This is the whiskey distillery that we have over here. So you haul in water and barley, and it's going to output... What is it output? Compost, maybe? Chaff? Out that uh, outlet right there on the side of the building is going to come either chaff or compost. Over here, you can sell barley in one of those lanes, and then on the far lane, uh, you bring barley, and it'll get turned into whiskey. And the output's going to hit down here. So the player can come pick those things up and haul it off to market. So, you know, I'm looking at the time, and I believe I've already gone through a half hour um, so there's more that could be explored here so but what I think I'll do is try to break this into distillable pieces if you will I'm gonna cut the video here and we'll take it up on the next one and continue kind of a brief map tour to see kind of what we're gonna be getting ourselves into thank you so much for watching and we'll see you on the next one bye bye for now